Hi, let's start with the concept capsules for today. The topic that we're going to look at is the timeline. Now, this is a concept that you would see in most of the subjects in finance. Whether it's the CFA curriculum or the FRM curriculum, you're bound to come across the timeline many, many different number of times. Now, the reason behind that is because most of the valuations in finance are in one way or the other dependent upon the timeline and the concept of discounted cash flows. So once you understand the timeline properly, you'll be able to apply it everywhere. Now, the advantage of using this concept of timeline is that even though the terminology might change from subject to subject, mathematically, the concept remains exactly the same. The concept of compounding and discounting do not change, even though we're just using different terms. So for instance, what we might call as present value and future value in time value of money, we can use exactly the same concept in derivatives as forward price and the spot price. So there is no change there at all. So mathematically, the concept is going to remain the same. So let's use this to our advantage. And that's the reason why we're calling timeline as our best friend. Now let's look at what the timeline is and what are the various possible applications of the timeline. And what is a timeline? Timeline is basically an illustration of the amounts and the timing of cash flow from any investment project. Now, the way we will be dividing the time intervals on the timeline is, should be such that it's equidistant. So if you're using years, then it should be one year, two year, three year, and so on. If you're using it, if you're using, let's say, semi-annual periods, then it should be six months, 12 months, 18 months, and so on. So the time period should be equidistant. That's the point of having a timeline. Now, some of the applications that we're going to look at would be, first would be the quantitative methods. So you use it for time value of money. So that's the first chapter that you would do in your CFA curriculum. And you do the same thing in FRM as well. Then we have capital budgeting, where we have the NPV and the IR concepts. Then we look at equity valuation, fixed income valuation, and then finally, derivatives pricing and valuation. Now, keep in mind, these are only some of the applications. There are many more applications, but of course, it's not possible to cover that in just one video because timeline is everywhere. Wherever you're doing any kind of valuation, you can, you will have something to do with the timeline usually. So let's look at all of these concepts now. First, let's look at the time value of money in quantitative methods. Now, in TVM or time value of money, you use it for the calculation of future values, present values, for annuities, perpetuities. You use it in problems for retirement planning. So let's say if you need, uh, you know, X amount of money every single month after retirement, then how much should you invest right now? So problems like that. Plus, you can use it to calculate your mortgage payments as well, right? Your annuity problems. So time value of money is used extensively. So let's have a quick look at what this concept is all about. So we have the concepts of future value and present value. Present value is the amount of money that you need to invest right now. Future value is what this present value will compound to. So if we need a thousand dollars two years from now, how much should we investing right now? So thousand dollars will become the future value. The amount we need to invest right now will be the present value. So when we have the present value, how do we go to the future value using that? We use the principle of compounding. Compounding means going forward, going ahead in time. So when you're going from the present value to future value, that is compounding. When you're doing the reverse, when you take the future value and then get back to the present value, when you're going back in time, that is the process that is called as discounting. So first, let's look at compounding. Now, how do we compound any cash flow? We take the present value, and then we multiply it with one plus the interest rate raised to the power of time. So in this case, we are talking about years zero, one, two, and three. So we take the present value, multiply it with one plus interest rate raised to the power of one. For the same thing, if you have to look at what would be the future value after two years, we compound it. Again, we take it into one plus I raised to the power of two. It's just the time period that is changing because now we are investing for a longer period of time. Now the reverse process is discounting. 
that is basically about the calculation of present value. So if you've been given a future value, FE1, which is the future value in year one, how do we get it back to the present value? We essentially divide it by one plus i. So essentially what we did here, we are cross multiplying it. So from here, if you have to calculate the present value, we simply do future value one divided by one plus i raised to the power of one. That's exactly what we are doing here. So we can discount every single cash flow like that. So FV2, FV3, that is how we discount it. So that's the application of timeline in quantitative methods. Now let's look at the next application. That is for capital budgeting. Now capital budgeting in corporate finance is where you look at the concepts of NPV and IRR, the net present value and the internal rate of return. Now, why do we use these concepts? We use these concepts to select the best possible project. Also, if let's say we have, you know, multiple projects, uh, you know, how do we actually select the best one? We simply select the one which is the highest NPV. Also remember, if your NPV is negative, then you simply reject the project. So if you have multiple projects and all of them have negative NPVs, then you reject all of them. There's no compulsion to select any of those projects. If we have to select multiple projects, then NPV will help us sequence those projects. So which projects should we go in for first? Which projects should we take in after that? So we will essentially, uh, you know, uh, take the various NPVs and we'll sort it in a descending order. So the maximum NPV project is the one that you're going to select first, followed by the next one. Now, how do we calculate NPV? That is again, a concept which is based on the timeline. In time value of money, we just had to look at the present value. What do we mean by net present value? The difference between present value and net present value is that when we are cal calculating the net present value, we subtract the initial cash outflow as well. So let's try out a question. So in this case, you have minus 100, minus 100 shows the cash outflow at time period zero, zero means where you are right now. So you're investing $100 into the project, let's say, then you have 20 inflow coming in in the first year, same thing in year two, year three as well. And in the fourth year, you're getting 33. So these are the inflows that you're getting from the project. Now, the question is, should we accept this project or not? So let's say, if your required return is 8%, then how would you do it? You would take all of these individual cash inflows that we have at one, two, three, and four, and we will discount those just like what we did for time value of money. The difference here is that we discount all of them and then we add all of them up together. And finally, we subtract the initial cash outflow, which is 100. If this figure comes out to be positive, then yes, you can go ahead and accept the project. Otherwise you reject the project. Now an alternate representation of this timeline that some people prefer to use is that they would take the negative figure and put it below the timeline. So instead of putting minus 100 at the top, you could put minus 100 at the, you know, just here, just about here. So all the negative uh, cash flows go below the timeline, all the positive cash flows go above the timeline. So that's another method that a lot of people like to use. So it's up to you, wherever you want to put it, as long as you put the correct sign. Negative means money is going out. Positive means that it's an inflow, money is coming in. So how will we do this? We will discount every single cash flow. You can see the values here. So 20 divided by 1.08 raised to the power of one. You've discounted every single cash flow. And right at the end, you've subtracted the outflow, the initial outflow, which was 100. And that gives us an NPV of minus 24.20 million. So of course, it's a negative figure. So there is no way that we are going to select this project. Just like we calculated the NPV, we can calculate the IRR as well. Now, what is IRR? IRR is that rate which makes NPV is equal to zero. That means that your cash inflows and cash outflows, when they've been discounted to the present value, are basically equal to each other. So that's when your NPV will become zero. Now, how do we calculate this? Of course, since you're using your BA2 plus calculator, you can use the IRR function to calculate this. Uh, if you're doing it manually, then you will have to go in for the trial and error method. So of course that is going to take some time. So it's better that you use the calculator function or you can use Excel to do this as well. 
Now IRR in this case comes out to be minus 2.62%. So that agrees with the NPV conclusion that we should not be selecting this project. So that's the application of the timeline in capital budgeting. Now let's look at equity valuation. Now in equity valuation, we have so many different kind of models that we have done. Now, most of these models would rely on discounting the cash flows. Now, how are we defining the cash flows that could change, but mathematically the method remains the same. So we would have the dividend discount model. We would have the free cash flow model that could be FCFE or FCFF, or it could be the residual income model. But once you've determined what these cash flows are, you will again put them on the timeline and then discount it back to time period zero. So the application of the timeline remains the same across all of these three methods. So uh, you can see that uh, you, know, you need to use the timeline even for equity valuation and in exactly the same way mathematically. Now let's start a question on this. Now for the next three years, the annual dividend of a stock are expected to be 1 euro, 1 1.5 euros and 2 euros. So the three dividends have been given to us. That's for the next three years. The stock price is expected to be 20 euros at the end of three years. So let's say if you want to exit the stock, we want to sell the stock after three years. That is what the price is expected to be. Now the required rate of return is 10%. What is the estimated value of a share? Since we are using dividends, that means we are going in for the dividend discount model. So we will be taking these dividends as the cash flows and we will be discounting them back to time period zero. The uh, other thing that you will need to keep in mind is that in addition to the dividends, we've been given the exit price or the terminal value as well. That is 20 euros. So that is what we are going to put in time period three in addition to the dividend. So now what are the cash flows that we have? We have one euro, 1.5. And in the third one, we have two, which is the dividend plus 20, which is our expected terminal value at that period. So how much should we be paying for this stock right now? We take all of these values and we discount them back to time period zero. That is how much the stock is worth fundamentally. Remember, you cannot calculate the market value. You can only calculate the fundamental value or the intrinsic value. So according to our assumptions, that is how much the stock should be valued at. So in this case, once you discount all of these cash flows back to zero, you will end up getting and when you sum them up, you'll get 8.67 euros. So according to us, the stock should be valued at 18.67 euros. So if in the market, the value is higher than this, then we will say that we should not be buying that stock because it is overvalued. It should be trading at 18.67. If it's trading at any price more than that, then it's overvalued. If it's lesser than this, then it will be undervalued and then we should go ahead and buy the stock. So that's how we use the timeline for equity valuation. Next, let's look at bond valuation. Now, bond valuation bond is, of course, a fixed income instrument. And there's so many different kinds of bonds that are available. So you have a plain vanilla bond, which is essentially a straight bond. Straight bond means that it's the simplest kind of bond that is there. So it's giving you a fixed coupon every year. There, is, there are no embedded option into that bond. It's not callable, it's not portable, it's not convertible. So basically, the, you know, the, that's why it's called as a plain vanilla bond. So it's the simplest form of bond that you could have. Then we have the zero coupon bond. We have the deferred coupon bond, step up bonds, and so many different varieties of bonds. Now, regardless of the kind of bond that we're talking about, the valuation again happens on the timeline only. So what we do is again, somewhat similar to what we did for equities. Just that instead of taking the dividends or the free cash flow or the residual income, we take the coupons as the cash flow. So let's say if you have a plain vanilla bond, we will take the coupon, let's say the coupon in year one, in year two, and let's say if you're holding it for three years, the third year coupon plus the par value. So let's say the maturity of the bond itself is three years, so you're getting the par value back. We take all of these values, all the cash flows, and then again discount it to time period zero. We take all the present values and then sum them up together. That is how much we should be paying for the bond today. That is the correct value of the bond. So the value of the bond is actually going to depend upon two main factors. 
that is the relationship between C and the other factor that is Y. C is the coupon on the bond. Coupon is what the issuer is ready to pay to you. Y is the YTM, the yield to maturity. That is your required rate of return from the bond. If what the issuer is paying is equal to what you require, then this bond is going to trade at the par value. If what the issuer is paying, that is the coupon, that's higher than what you required. Let's say the issuer is ready to pay you 10% and your required rate of return from that bond was 7%. Then of course, that is something that you really want to buy. The bond is giving you a higher return than what you required. So in this case, you're ready to pay a premium to get the bond. You're ready to pay more than the par value for the bond. So it's the relationship between C and Y, the coupon and the yield that is going to determine whether the bond is trading at the par value, at a premium or at a discount. So that's the application of the timeline to bond valuation. Finally, let's look at the application to derivatives pricing and valuation. Now, derivatives, of course, we have different kinds of derivatives. We have forwards, futures, we have forward rate agreements, FRAs, we have uh, options and swaps as well. All of these will be valued using the timeline again. Now, the complexity could increase if we talk about instruments such as options and swaps. But the fundamental mathematical method is still the timeline. It's still discounted cash flow only. Now let's take a simple example for a forward contract. Let's say the spot price of a stock is $90. Risk-free rate has been given as 4% per annum. And the forward contract expires in one year. So we've been given the spot price, risk-free rate, and the time period. We're asked to find out the correct forward price. Now, this concept is identical to what we did for time value of money. Spot price is the same as the concept of present value. That's the value of the asset in the market right now. So that's like the present value. Risk-free rate is already there in the model. The forward contract expires in one year. So that is basically the time period. Now, what is the correct forward price? Forward price is basically just your future value. So remember we said, that the terminology keeps changing, but the mathematical uh, you know, way of finding anything on the timeline doesn't. It's still all about compounding and discounting. So we've been asked to calculate essentially the future value given the present value, rate, and the time period. So how do we do this? The future value we know is nothing but the present value into one plus R to the power of T. If you see the pricing, the formula for pricing the forward, that's actually the same. It's S0 into 1 plus R to the power of T. So you can see the similarity. S0 is basically your present value. So all that we do is we take 90 and we compound it at the rate of 4% for one year. And the forward price comes out to be 93.6, which is basically your future value. So you see, even derivatives pricing is nothing but an application of timeline. So we looked at five different subjects essentially to see how we can apply timeline across so many different subjects. So remember, this is why we're calling it your best friend, because once you understand the timeline and the concept of time value of money, you can keep applying it everywhere in so many subjects. And remember, we've not covered all the subjects where timeline could be used. You could use right now, we've just covered the traditional investments. You can actually use timelines for alternative investments as well. So for instance, when you're trying to price commodity futures, commodity forwards, you can use it there. You can use it even in real estate. So when you calculate, let's say net operating income in real estate, even that is an application of the timeline only. So wherever you're valuing something, in most cases, you will rely on one of one of the other forms of the timeline and the discounted cash flow method. So I hope you understood why we insist so much on understanding the timeline first. That's the reason why. When you do quants, this is your first chapter because this is getting used everywhere. So make sure you understand the timeline well.